Our next tissue type in the human body is connective tissue. And just like connective tissue, the name implies, this does do a great job of connecting things together in the human body, but it does a few other things as well. So on the list here, functions of connective tissue. This is the type of tissue that provides a lot of support for soft internal organs. So without connective tissue, these would be um, very vulnerable. They would not be nearly as, as supported. And so they'd be more prone to experience damage. Um, so connective tissue does an important job in providing support. It also provides literally connections. This, uh, we'll see some examples of that connections in the body. And this is also the type of tissue that allows energy to be stored. So storage of fat. This is done in connective tissue. And finally, last but not least here on this list is the production of blood cells. Connective tissue does include bone and bone is actually what produces blood cells for us. So that's quite a variety of functions. Connective tissue is very diverse. It does many different things and it comes in many different structural varieties as well. So we're gonna start off with trying to describe the structure of connective tissue. What can we say about all connective tissue? What does it all have in common? Here's what it all has in common. The cells that are present are embedded in something called an extracellular matrix. And essentially what this is, is um, it's a collection of substances that the cells have secreted. So we've got cells that are just kind of hanging out in this matrix. This matrix will have a number of things present. It, it'll have kind of like a gel substance and then also fibers that are present within that gel. Um, so as far as, as far as different types of connective tissue go, what's gonna be different are the cell types that are present and essentially the fiber types that are present in the extracellular matrix. So many different variants <clears throat> types of cells that we might see present in connective tissue include these guys here. So fibroblasts, these are the main cell types that are present in connective tissue. But we will also find that there are other cell types, macrophages, lymphocytes, and neutrophils. These are all actually parts of the immune system, cells that are a part of the immune system. And they tend to hang out in the connective tissue as well. So these cells that are present um, contribute again to that extracellular matrix and here are some of the fiber types that they might produce. Collagen, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. And we'll take a look at, at these in a little bit more detail on the next slide. Let's take a look at this table. Different varieties of connective tissue that exist throughout the human body. So two major categories fibrous connective tissue and then special connective tissues. Let's start up here with the fibrous connective tissue. Just like the name implies, in these types of connective tissues, there's a high presence of fibers in that extracellular matrix. Um, I'm gonna show you some pictures of loose and dense. Let's first just read kind of what's the difference between these. If we're talking about loose fibrous connective tissue, and what that means is that the fibers that are present, uh, they're present, but they're not arranged in any particular pattern. Um, so there's a lot more of the gel-like ground substance than there are fibers. Versus, if we compare that with dense fibrous connective tissue, it's very dense with fibers. There's a lot, there are a lot of fibers present and not as much ground substance. So here's the picture to compare and contrast those two. We've got loose fibrous connective tissue up here. You can see a lot of fibers are just kind of arranged every which way. And then down here we have dense fibrous connective tissue. Pretty much all of the fibers are running in the same direction. They're pretty packed in densely. And these two different structural arrangements will give different properties. So loose fibrous connective tissue, this will, will be a lot more flexible. Um, but it will not be as strong. If you have all the fibers aligned in the same direction, that means this structure is going to be really strong. If I held on to, to this end and to this end, and if I gave it a pull, um, those fibers are going to resist deformation. They're going to be very strong. And so that tends to be the type of connective tissue that we see in things like tendons, ligaments, um, things that are connecting bone to muscle and bone to bone um, provides a lot of strength in those locations. 
Whereas loose fibrous connective tissue, where might that be located at? So it provides flexibility um, and just kind of moderate strength. This is the type of connective tissue that we see surrounding internal organs. So this is the type that's providing sort of general support for a lot of those internal organs. Coming down the list here, we have a couple of other types of fibrous connective tissues, elastic fibrous connective tissue, just like its name implies. This provides a lot of um, stretching capability and the type of fibers that are present and allowing for that are elastic fibers. So um, there's a high proportion of fibers that are flexible. This provides elasticity and this is really important if we're talking about an organ that has to change shape. So for example, um, the stomach has to change shape regularly. Um, it is supported by a lot of elastic fibrous connective tissue. Reticular fibrous connective tissue, essentially what this does, the reticular fibers um, provide general support in a lot of our soft organs, so it provides a, a flexible framework internally for those organs. And next up, let's go ahead and move on to the special connective tissues. So still the general principles apply that we have cells embedded in an extracellular matrix. Um, but what are some of the special features that we have down here? Okay, if we're talking about cartilage, cartilage is a substance that really helps to maintain shape and resist compression. So there are some body structures that are actually made of cartilage, for example, the nose and the ears, the shape that is maintained there is due to the cartilage that's present. Um, cartilage also does a very important, plays a very important role in skeletal formation. So actually in babies, they start out with a skeleton made of cartilage and essentially that cartilage guides the formation of the bones. So that's very important. Um, leads us right to the next type of special connective tissue. Bone is considered a connective tissue. So the structure of bone is special in that the matrix around the cells has been hardened. It's got a lot of hard mineral deposits and consequently uh, bone ends up being very strong and this is what forms our skeleton in a full-grown um, adult. Third on the list here for special connective tissues, blood. You may not have thought of blood as being a tissue before, but it is actually. It is considered a type of connective tissue. The very unusual thing about blood as a connective tissue is that the matrix is fluid. And I added that in right here. We have a fluid matrix in the case of blood. It's mostly water and it's got a lot of other things dissolved in it as well. Um, and then the cells float in that liquid matrix. So we've got red blood cells, white blood cells. Um, those are the cell types that are living in the matrix. So this is very important for providing transport of materials throughout the body. And then last on the list here for special connective tissues, adipose tissue. This means fat tissue. Adipose tissue is composed of cells that are called adipocytes. These are just fat cells and they do a great job of storing energy. So fat molecules, um, lipids are stored inside of these cells. So this is very good for storing energy. This also provides insulation and protection for a lot of the other organs throughout the body. So a lot of times the adipose tissue kind of provides a little bit of support and it is found um, truly throughout the body.